Good afternoon, Chairwoman Bryce, Manking Member Kilmer, and members of the subcommittee. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to testify at today's hearing to discuss preliminary observations from GAO's ongoing work on state capabilities to hold special elections in the event of mass vacancies in the U.S. House of Representatives. All levels of government share responsibility in the U.S. election process, and the election system is highly decentralized. States are responsible for the administration of their own elections, as well as federal elections. States regulate various aspects of elections, including registration procedures, absentee and early voting requirements, and election day procedures. And they support local jurisdictions in administering elections. The process for holding elections includes activities like registering voters, recruiting and training poll workers, selecting polling locations, transmitting absentee and vote by mail ballots, and setting up voting machines and voting booths. In 2005, Congress passed a law that addresses holding special elections when the Speaker of the House announces that there are more than 100 vacancies in state representation in the House. In such extraordinary circumstances, the law, the law requires that states in which vacancies exist do several things, including holding a special election within 49 days. Today I will summarize our preliminary observations on one, state laws related to holding special elections to fill House vacancies and how they compare with the federal law to hold such elections, and to the perspectives of state election officials on the capabilities of and challenges facing states in holding special elections to fill House vacancies. First, our preliminary analysis has identified nine states that have laws for holding special elections to fill House vacancies that adopt aspects of the federal law for the state, such as those related to the 49-day time frame. Our preliminary analysis also shows that 41 states do not appear to have laws that adopt the federal law for their state. Almost all of these states have provisions in state law that address holding special elections to fill vacancies in their representation in the House. Examples of the types of timing provisions in these laws include specifying the number of days within which states are required to hold the election or giving the governor discretion to order an election within a specific time frame. Second, we surveyed state election officials in all 50 states to obtain their perspectives on holding special elections consistent with the federal law. As of the beginning of this month, 27 states have responded to the survey. Based on our preliminary analysis of the survey results, 15 of the 27 officials who responded to the survey reported that they were not aware of the federal law prior to hearing about our study. In addition, in responding to our survey, state election officials identified a range of challenges related to holding special elections consistent with the federal law. For example, officials reported that it would be difficult to select candidates within the time frames required by the law. Officials also noted challenges related to preparing and printing ballots, identifying polling places and poll workers, and transmitting absentee ballots to military and overseas voters. Officials also reported to us that the challenges they identified could affect the accuracy and availability of ballots, pamphlets, and other voting materials, public perceptions of the election, and voting access, such as whether voters have sufficient time to request absentee ballots. However, based on our preliminary analysis, many state election officials reported to us that they believe they could hold a special election uh, consistent with the requirements in the federal law. Additionally, they identified state practices that may help them hold such elections, such as some states assigning responsibility for candidate selection to political parties, which could be got done relatively quickly under a special election. We also heard that vote centers could help give state election officials flexibility in conducting an election on short notice. Uh, these are locations where ballots for all precincts in a local jurisdiction are available to all voters so that they can vote at any center of their choosing. Uh, in closing, we are continuing our review of these topics and we plan to issue a final report in the coming months. Um, this concludes my prepared statement and I would be pleased to answer any questions members may have.